Good morning everyone and welcome to Murphy's Law Garage. Today I've got a treat especial for y'all. Uh, we are working on my father's 2012 Ram 2500 Longhorn that had a VGT turbo failure. Uh, it appears as if the solenoid either locked up or the collars for adjusting the VGT are seized. Uh, the truck is stuck in, uh, in engine brake or warm up mode and uh, we need to get it out of there. Now we could just do a rebuild, but that's not what's happening here because we're putting a bigger batter turbo and we're also putting a better flowing manifold. So stick around, let's get this done. Now y'all didn't think I wasn't gonna show y'all me putting this uh, recently repaired plastic panel on. If you hadn't seen the video of this plastic repair, go ahead and check out the last video posted to the channel. And I'm also gonna put a link down below so that y'all can see that. Now, I've, uh, Done a little bit off camera here just to make this easier on myself because it's hard to line the camera up and work on this, but that clip that we fixed in the front that hooks a tab, I've got that hooked on over here. She's nice and strong. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set the camera up where y'all can watch me push this panel into place and then clip the switch panel in. And there it is, ladies and gents on and ready to break again another day here it is the monster under the bonnet 2012 6.7 turbo diesel cummins the only motor a real truck should ever have she's a uh, she's fully deleted programmed air intake on it you got that cold air live induction aftermarket air box with the cone filter hiding in there here's the manifold we're replacing and you can see the original turbo hiding down there All right, so here we have the BD Performance two-piece manifold that fits 2007 to 2016, I believe. Let's check that. 2018, 6.7 Cummins. This is going to get us more flow, going to help lower our EGTs, drop the back pressure on the turbo a bit. And speaking of turbo, look at that purple beauty right there. This is from Aurora Turbo Systems. She's a, she's a bad girl. Look how pretty she's painted. Now this is a uh, brand new build turbo. This is not done using a reman core. Let me flip her over real quick. You can see that... Uh, We've got the backside, the housing is coated, ceramic coated. Try to heat, help keep those temperatures down, get rid of that nasty rust. As you can see here, very importantly, we're keeping that VGT functionality so that we have that quicker spool. And boy, isn't she pretty. All right, everyone, let's get into this. I'm gonna do my best with camera angles and I'm mostly gonna time lapse this and I'm gonna stop and uh, explain things as I go, just so that y'all know exactly what I'm working on. All right, as y'all saw, the intake is out. Holy crap, dude. Might have to talk to someone about cleaning their reusable air filter from time to time, eh? Y'all see this? Jeez. And me and Pops were just talking about needing to put a catch can on this thing, and it certainly is taking in some oil. All right. 
right, got y'all freehand in the engine bay here with me. This is the cold, uh, the hot side intercooler piping right here. And I've already got this clamp loosened up and pulled back out of my way. But as usual, with anything rubber on a piece of metal, this has decided to somewhat weld itself to that uh, aluminum. Now, you might well think, well, why don't we just uh, spray a little WD-40 or silicone spray or something in there and work it loose. But when you're dealing with a high boost application like a diesel truck or anything turbocharged really, these couplers are holding back 20, 30, in the case of this truck, 40, 50 pounds of boost. And if you get any sort of lubrication on this coupler, it's gonna blow off no matter how tight you put a T-clamp like this. So I've got a secret for you. Um, one of the ways you can, you can help get these couplers loose is to physically grab the rubber from a distance here and twist it. And you can see when I twist it really well, let's try to get both arms in here for y'all. If I twist it really well, you can see that it starts to wrinkle up and open up a channel to the front here. The next thing you're going to need is one of these. See this? This has got a nice dull tip on it. That's actually this purpose, this tool's purpose, other than working with O-rings, is so that you can get up under a coupler like this or a uh, coolant hose and work it around the coupler to free it. And now that I've got that, if I do that, bam, she's loose all the way around. Well, let me get the other side loose and I'm gonna get this uh, hot side pipe out. That moment when you decide taking the air box out would make your life a little bit easier. And you pull this one really big Allen headed bolt out. Allen head, because why not? S and B. And you go, all right, I don't see anything else holding it in there. It should come right out. Well, wait, it, what? Hold on. No. Look at this. Look at this. It's screwed in down below. But even better. There's the battery tray. And the screws are way the heck down there. Like, it's either pull the battery out or squeeze your hand into the tightest little hole there is to pull those bolts out. And when a ratcheting wrench would box in would make this so much easier, you cannot find a single one in the shop, of course. So I'm going in raw with the old school stuff. Wish me luck. So I abandoned my previous idea. If we take six bolts off that bottom foot and wiggle a whole lot, that comes out. Now we've got a lot more space to work with. Let's get that hot side pipe out now. All right, y'all, I'm in the middle of getting this manifold and turbo out of here. And I wanted to bring y'all in for something I found. You see the block off plate we've got here from the EGR delete? See the gasket material that's loose? Now look at the spatter on this heat shield right here. It's actually, the exhaust is blown by this cover, this block off plate, and has been blowing across this manifold. So we've been losing some drive pressure here. All right, everyone, I've got everything loose. I'm gonna set you up to do a time lapse to try to wiggle the turbo and the manifold out of here. I wanted to show you something that is infuriating. And that is these. Have you ever worked on something on a car and then immediately after just wanted to punch an engineer in the face? You wanna take a wild guess what these suckers do? These things right here are bolt retaining tabs for the very last two bolts, top and bottom on the manifold. That's right, in the very most difficult place to get to anything. And you think, well, geez, JB, it should just slip off of there, right? It's shaped like the bolt. No, negative. See how it's got that bent in shape like that? It is press fit onto the bolt. Let's deposit that on the floor. And when I say the last two, I mean 
those two back there. And not just on the top, but on the bottom. But it gets even better. One of the bolts down there, the studs, is actually designed to hold this coolant bypass pipe. So that's just fantastic. It's all up in the way and pushed on. I'm sure I'll look great. But even better than that. Even better. They're made of really, really good stainless, which is fantastic to have some good quality stainless steel that won't rust away. But you wasn't cutting that with a pair of snips at that angle. There we go, that's better. I have spent what is probably the last 45 minutes to an hour bent over, up in that corner, tearing my hands up, trying to get those things to come out of there. Ended up having to just put a socket on the bolt and the stud and send it until it would spin inside of the bracket. But even then, it was still so tight. I'm talking grab it with pliers, twist, pull. That was rough. Engineers, man. I... None of, the other, none of the other bolts or studs have it. Not a single one. So why they think just the last two on the manifold really, really did not need to come off? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm going to set you all up with a time lapse and uh, let's go try to pull that manifold and turbo out of there. Look at that, there's so much room for activities. So uh, let's say we go compounds, I mean, or you take the air box out, who needs an air filter? Put a big fat one right here, little guy right here, bam, sold, 2,000 foot pounds. <laughs> Here's the factory manifold out. Here's the factory, very dirty factory turbo. It's obviously been sucking up a lot of oil. We're gonna have to fix that. Let me get this uh, turbo inside. I'm gonna move the accessories onto the new turbo and get that stuck back in the hole. But, but the manifold and the turbo are bolted in. And I'm gonna move on to getting all these accessories laid back on here. Well, here it is, right before the sun goes down. One last view before the intake gets in the way. She's all buttoned up and ready to go. Quick side note, I soaked that air filter in uh, Simple Green and Dawn for about two hours. This is what the water looked like. Dried it out. Now look how much better that looks. There it is. Gentlemen, that ass turbo with a free flow of manifold. She's ready to rip again. 
All I need to do now is purge the air bubbles out and take her for a drive. Y'all will come with me in a little while. It's very hard to warm a diesel up just sitting here idling. On the plus side, at 2,500 RPM, we're making three pounds of boost. <laughs> hey, let's check into the Must be a Dodge. All right, just out doing some gentle driving. I've got the error DTC codes cleared. I've got the computer soft reset in hopes that the uh, truck will relearn with its new turbo and manifold. I'm just going to take you down the road with me for a gentle drive. And then when she doesn't appear like she's going to blow up, uh, we're going to send it and see how she does. So far, so good. This is me shooting the outro. I'm back home with the Ram Charger here. As you can see, the truck's running great. It's gonna need to go to the dealership to have a VGT relearn done on it because the VGT valve is, uh, is having trouble finding full open and full closed and being a little erratic. But it's a different turbo, different actuator. That's, that's not really unusual. But, uh, yep, if you don't mind, like, Subscribe, hit that bell icon, and join me for the next one.